Today we're going to be talking about how to repair and replace cat wiring and connectors. So the first thing to know is cat wiring and connectors are fairly universal. They pretty much all use Deutz or Deutsch or Amp Seal. And that's pretty universal. And the good thing about that is they all use the same pins and sockets for the most part. Now these are, I'm just going to call them Deutz. That's how most people pronounce it. This is a two pin socket or connector. It has two sockets in it. And say it's getting, you're going to replace this connector or one of the pins or one of the wires going to it. So the first thing to do is obviously remove it from the sensor. Then you're going to remove the plastic retaining cap. Now you can see that you can see the two metal socket contact points in there. What you're going to do is there are plastic retaining tangs under the socket. What you're going to do is slightly press down on that and then the wire will be able to be pulled out through the back. And that is the correct way to do it. See? All right, so now your socket's removed. If you're going to repair the wiring or run a new wire from the ECM, that is how you remove it from the sensor connectors and they're fairly all the same. The amp seal ones with the little red tang on the outside you have to move before disconnecting the the connector from the sensor. They use the same style. So after you reinsert it you're gonna make sure you put that retaining cap in. Now what that retaining cap does is it keeps the lock tangs in place so that the pin cannot get pulled out and you really want to make sure that the pins don't fall out or else you get a check engine light. All right, so now we're going to be talking about the hard part, the ECM connectors. And if you want to run a new socket with wire going to your ECM connector, it's a little more difficult. So we're going to try to take out pin 70 here. So the connector itself does not disassemble. So how do you get that pin or socket out of there? Well, you need a removal tool. And most of the cat wiring, they use the blue colored one. The color of the removal tool determines the size of the wire. There's yellow and there's red. Blue is kind of the intermediate one. And you can get these at uh, electronic stores, online, or cat dealers should have them. And what you're going to do, opposed to moving any tang out of the way, like on the smaller connectors, is you're going to insert the back of the removal tool in behind the wire you're trying to remove, and then as you leave it in there, you're going to pull on the wire and it should dislodge itself depending on how long it's been in there. So once you have it inserted all the way, you're going as the removal tool is still in, you're going to pull on the removal tool and the wire and it should pop out. Now, like I said, if it's been in there, this is a fairly older engine, it might be a pain to get out. But it will pull out as long as your, retaining, your removal tool is still working. So there we go. So you can see the removal tool is still on, and the wire has been removed. And that's how you remove them from these backside connectors where you don't actually like push down on the tang. You need this removal tool. Now, the good thing is to install a new wire, they're self-installing basically. So you just push it in the same hole and it'll lock in place. So once it's fully inserted, it's self-locking. Now the good thing about that is you cannot pull that sucker out by hand. You'd have to have that removal tool. This system works really well. So typically after they've been removed once or twice, it makes it easier getting this removal tool in there. Now my, re my removal tool is kind of beat up. I do need a new one, hence this is a little more difficult. But the problem with these is they are plastic, so after a few uses, typically the tips will break a little bit. And you can still use them, but they don't work quite as well. So I'm just trying to get that same wire back out of there. And there you go, pop back out. So that is how you remove them from the ECM connectors, and there's the removal tool. So if you're running a new wire, you would just run it from that ECM connector up to that new sensor. Now, 
how do you get these pins and sockets to work? So the pin is the male part and the socket is the female part. I have the cat part numbers there. And they're fairly universal, like I said, to work on the Deutz and on the amp seal connectors. So you have your wire side here, and there's a small hole that'll focus in that when you insert the wire to crimp it, you can see that it's fully inserted. So we have a piece of wire here. I'm going to show you how these are crimped. So you're going to strip about, I'd say about three eighths of an inch off the end of the wire. And then you either, you want to crimp it and there's a special crimping tool that you will need. Now the cat one or the Deutz kit one is about $200 for the crimper. However, if you go online or with your tool guy, there's another company that makes the crimpers that costs, they're only about $35. Uh, you can get on Amazon, online, different places. So after you have stripped it, you're gonna install the wire on there. And you don't want a lot of wire hanging out between the insulation and the socket or pin because that will make it more flexible and you want it to be fairly stiff. Now you're not gonna use a normal crimper like that because that'll distort it. This is the specific crimper I was talking about. This is the cheaper one, this is the $40 one, not the super expensive $200 one. Now I have soldered these before. If you heat that pin up, you can drip a little solder in there and that works fairly well as well. And the reason you don't want to distort it is because if you do, you will have a real hard time inserting that in the back of a connector. So hopefully we can see. It crimps it in four places. So that is crimped. Oh, maybe you can see the teeth here. I don't know, it's hard to get a picture. Anyways, there's four teeth that come out as you as you pinch that down. And now we're going to do the, the pin, the male side. And make sure you know uh, strands of wire come out while you're trying to crimp. So we're going to install the pin and we're going to compress it. And that is it. That's how you run new pins or sockets to wiring. And these connections are real good. They make really good connections. And they are really tight. All right, and that's how you repair your wiring. Now, what about wires that don't have the pins and sockets, like your injectors, IVAs, jakes? They do not use the standard pins and sockets. Well, I'm going to talk about that. All right, so typically your injectors, your IVA solenoids, your jake solenoids, they do not run the same pins and sockets as all the external wiring does. So how do you repair those? Well, of course you can replace your internal harness, but that's a lot of money and time. They make crimp-on repair kits for most of those connectors, your IVAs, your injector solenoid plugs, whether it's a the two-prong one that runs over the studs of the injectors or a C7 where they go in and the tang rolls over. Those can be repaired. There's repair kits that you cut the ends of the wires off and they come with heat shrink and crimp terminals or you can solder them. So what you do is you cut off the end of the injector connector or the IVA connector that you're trying to replace. You then slide the heat shrink over it, you crimp the new ends on and then run the heat shrink over it. And those connector repair kits run from 20 to $40, depending on what model engine you have. And that's a lot cheaper than doing the whole injector harness. All right, that's pretty much all you need to know about doing these wiring and connector kits. I wanted to give a shout out to Kevin in Ireland. He wanted a shout out. So if you found this video helpful, check out my other videos and subscribe. Thank you.